Hello and welcome back. My name's Teneva, if this is your first time joining me here. I have something a little different for you today. Today I'm doing a video all about canvases. So I'm going to go over what canvases I like and why, how I prep them from taping, pins, to what I do as far as a uh, base coat for my paint and why I do what I do. I've had a lot of questions about how I prep my canvases. So I figured instead of adding this on to the beginning of every video or something like that, that I would just make one really nice tutorial to reference people back to so that you can get this information easily. I also want to start off by saying that I am not sponsored by anybody. So this is purely my true opinion about the canvases I like. I bought a lot of canvases when I started out and now I'm down to just a couple that I really use regularly. So let's start there. What do I use? For budget canvases, my go-to are these Phoenix artist canvases. I get them on Amazon. I put them in auto subscribe so I get the, the couple of sizes that I really like to use most. I get sent every month 15% off. So these end up being really quite affordable. I think these 16 by 16s are 250 a piece, something like that. And every brand of canvas that I know of has this budget quality canvas. So whether you're going to Dick Blick uh, or you're going to Michaels, they have the Artist Loft brand. They all have a budget canvas. These are a little more expensive by a very small fraction. And I think that they are far better quality comparatively for a couple of reasons. Let me, so here is one that's unwrapped out of the package. And there's a couple of things that I like about these. A, they're a nice, they're a decent quality heaviness of the canvas compared to some of the other ones. They don't feel quite as thin. And then the other thing is, is the frame itself doesn't seem to have the tendency to warp that some of the budget ones I've used do. And then the other big thing that I like is that the corners don't seem to pucker as badly as some of the other ones I've used. And that can be a problem when you're tilting that things will, that your uh, composition will get caught in there and, and kind of warp. So I, I like this brand. I think it's a great brand, especially for, um, the price compared to quality. I, I think it's just superior. Okay. Next up is our level twos. So I have used level twos from Artist Loft and from Dick Blick. I tend to choose Artist Loft just because I think the price is a little bit better comparatively. I think they're both a great quality canvas, but I, the price is generally a little better on um, Artist Loft and they tend to have better sales. At, and Artist Loft, if you don't know, is a Michaels brand. So if you uh, get the weekly updates from Michaels, these go on sale fairly often for pretty big discounts. So they're a good value. Uh, I can't remember if I said this, they're three quarter inch instead of half inch like these are. So they're just a little bit thicker. And what I like about them is that they are splined. And what that means is the canvas wraps around the frame and then there's a second frame sandwiched in that keeps it tight. So these look really nice on the back when you're uh, finished with your painting and especially if you're selling them or giving them as gifts. It, just gives a really nice presentation, I think. And they these are also really good about not puckering on the corners, so I like that a lot. Again, uh, nothing wrong with the Dick Blick brand, I just think these are a little bit better value, okay? So then we go up one more step to the level threes. So my go-to, again, is going to be the Artist Loft brand. So the big difference with level threes is you have an inch and a half gallery profile 
which is really nice, deep profile. It's very beefy and a little better quality canvas even than the level choose. And the main reason, again, that I will choose an artist loft over Dick Blix is that you can't beat the price. The price is phenomenal on these in comparison to the Dick Blix. What I use the Dick Blix for, why I do buy some, is because there are some sizes in Blix that I can't get in Artist Law. I use uh, 30 by 72 fairly often, and that's when I can't get an Artist Law, so I get the Dick Blix. And I get the Premier, it's the yellow label, and I, again, get this splined because they have, um, their level threes come in splined or back stapled canvas. I like the splined. And especially for the level threes, when I'm doing big canvases, I think the splined is important. Um, I don't have any empirical proof on this, but I feel like when I'm doing big canvases, the splined canvas stays more taut. So when you're doing big canvases that have a lot of paint on them, there can be a tendency to droop in the middle and you don't want that. Uh, that can cause horrible things to happen to your paintings for this style of painting. So I like the spline canvases for that. And uh, while we're talking about big canvases, one thing I want to caution you against. So this is a uh, 36 by 48 inch level two canvas. And I bought these before I was really doing big canvases and I thought the price point was great. So I got a few of them. What I figured out though, is if you're doing a pour that has a lot of heavy paint on it, like a big uh, ring pour or multiple rings or things like that, where you've got a good amount of thick paint, this doesn't work so well because if you're doing anything where you have to lift from the corner, it's going to warp. You can see, I think you can see on the video how much play I have there. So when it gets damp and heavy, you're going to have that. This is fine for something like a, uh, probably a Dutch pour that you're not going to be moving around a lot or something like a, uh, swipe again you you often aren't doing a lot of extreme tilting with that so for anything really big like say probably 24 by 48 or larger I always 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 go with a level three because I can put as much paint as I want on there and I can tilt like crazy and the frame isn't gonna warp and twist on me so that's uh that's what I like as far as canvases go I'm gonna move on to taping and pinning, and then we'll go to paint coverage. But at any point in time that you have a question, feel free to put that down in the uh, comment section below. I'm happy to answer anything that I can, okay? One thing I wanted to cover before we move on to taping is, do you need to tape your canvases? No. You really don't. It's uh, purely an aesthetics thing. I know a couple of prominent artists in the community who don't tape their canvases, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. So I like to tape my canvases because I think it just gives a better presentation overall. Again, if I am doing a commission, if I'm gifting this to somebody, I want it to look pretty front and back, and that's just me. But there is nothing from a structural point of view or anything like that. There's no reason beyond aesthetics to tape the back of your canvases. So there we go. I wanna go over a couple of things first. So I use two different types of tape depending on what I'm taping. For my thin budget quality canvases, I use just plain old blue painter's tape, tape it on there, press it down really good, you're good to go. And the reason I do that is my budget quality canvases, I'm generally only using for practice. 
So I, I'm not planning on, they're not for commissions or sale, generally speaking, or anything like that. So I'm not quite as concerned about how the back of those go. And the reason I don't use that on my level two or level three, anything I'm doing for a commission or a gift is because it can get, a, you can get some seep around the edges. It's made to work for walls and wall paint. The paint we're using is wetter. So I think that's why it has a little more of a tendency to seep under. So for my better canvases, I use gaffer's tape. And I think it was, uh, I think it was Julie Thatcher who first mentioned, ga mentioned gaffer's tape. So that's what I've been using. Normally I use a white gaffer's tape, but I, I got this so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. And uh, this is the Amazon brand, which I really like a lot. It's a good quality for price. I... I don't, there's another brand on Amazon that's a little bit cheaper and I don't like it. It doesn't stick as well and it particularly doesn't stick well over time. So I, a lot of times will prep a bunch of canvases so that they're just ready that when I have a moment of time or that I feel inspired, I can just come up and paint and I don't have to deal with prep work. So that being said, okay. So I come in here with my tape and I give myself about an eighth of an inch between the tape and the very edge of the canvas. Pull it to the end, mark where I want it to stop and then tear it. Another thing I like about this tape is it tears really easily. And then I pull it tight and press it down and then I really, really push. I want that to be all the way tight down. So here, I was maybe a little bit further away from the edge of the canvas than I wanted to be. No big deal. Come in. This next piece of tape is gonna cover that. sure you guys can see how much I'm leaving there. And the reason I leave that little bit of an edge is so that when I'm taking the tape off, I for sure have really good coverage here and there's no chance of me peeling some of the tape from the side of the canvas off. I love the way the edges look for fluid art painting. So I try to keep those really, really nice and giving yourself this little bit of a, uh, uh, extra gap here gives you some safety. So that's that. And this is also a good example of why I give myself a leeway. You can see a little bit of the paint peeled up there away from where the line is. So I gave myself that safety margin and it worked really well. So for my push pins, I use these giant push pins that you get from Amazon. They're an inch and a half or so, and they're great. And you can see this one's covered in paint you can reuse them also. And I just take these and I use a rubber mallet and pound them in nice and flat. Couple of things to consider. You wanna, I always put it in the visible wood here. You do not wanna put it in this groove if you're using a spline canvas, that's really important. I don't think I can get you close enough to see it, but there is a rubber band in here that helps keep this in and tight. So if you break that rubber band, you have a tendency, or there's at least a possibility for the canvas to not stay as tight into the frame. And that's important. So you can, you can do it out here on the edge if you want. I tend to, I like to do it in here on the wood, but you just don't want it to be in that groove, okay? And then one more thing to consider, this is a, 24 by 36, so a bigger canvas. Anytime I have a bigger canvas like this, I like to put one, put push pins on each edge like that, okay? 
And what that does is it allows me that when I'm tilting, I have a lever on each side. I have a point that's gonna be at the bottom so that when I'm pouring paint off of the canvas, this bottom edge of the canvas doesn't droop into the paint. Again, I like the edges of my canvas to be really pretty, and this helps me do that. And I'll add a picture in of what it looks like when you don't have that. Again, this isn't something you have to do, especially if you're somebody who likes to paint your edges, you're not gonna be concerned about this. But I, I like to give myself this protection so that there's no way my edges can get down into the paint when I'm, when I'm tilting. I forgot to turn my video back on <laughs> before I started putting the uh, pins in. And if you're not sure where that groove is, you can use your nail or the end of the push pin and just kind of mark it off. And then I just go in from there. There we go. And if these are all in nice and flat to the canvas, and your table is flat, then you're good to go. If your table is not level, level it. It will make your life so much better, at least in regards to uh, fluid art, <laughs> okay? So one other thing I didn't show you before is sometimes these corners will get some frays. You'll have little strings hanging off. Make sure you cut those nice and neat so that they don't catch on your art. And then last thing is, this is a spray bottle with just plain water in it. And I'm just going to mist the back of the canvas. I like to really get in there, make sure everything is covered. You can take your hand and kind of do that. So I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it will slowly get tauter. There, it's like a drum head. There we go. Now, if you get puckering in the corners, which occasionally happens even with really good quality canvases, what I do is I really spray the heck out of that corner so that it almost puddles and leave it there for a second. And if it's doing it on all the corners, then I'll roll that extra water around. That little bit of extra water isn't going to hurt anything, but it will help make sure that the, uh, oh, you can really hear how tight that's gotten there. It will make sure that those puckers come out because everything is, uh, and the, all the fibers are contracting equally then. Okay, so the last thing for canvas is here. I have a canvas that I've already taped and put my push pins in. I have just straight paint here. This is uh, Rust-Oleum's Champagne Gold. And what I'm gonna do is just paint the edges of my canvas. This makes sure that I don't have any raw canvas showing through at the end. And it just gives a nicer presentation, I think. Especially when you're dealing with metallics or something that might not be super opaque, this just gives you another level of coverage. And it's one of those things that takes a potentially good painting and makes it excellent. Really paying attention to these sorts of details. Not using a lot of paint, just enough to get good coverage. Make sure corners are really dealt with. Don't want it so thick that it leaves ridges so that your fluid paint flows very nicely over the entire canvas. And then what I'll do is I take my brush, I wrap it in plastic wrap, and then I put that into a Ziploc bag. And that way I can reuse this dozens and dozens of times. Last thing I wanna to talk to you about today is using a base coat. Have our nice, totally ready canvas here. 
And the last thing before I start with my painting is to do a base coat. And there's a few different reasons why you can use a base coat or why you should use a base coat. In something like a swipe, it's absolutely essential because it's part of the composition, it's part of the effects, all of that sort of stuff. Unless you're doing a dry swipe, which is a whole different thing. I like to use a base coat on every painting I do though. I think on ring pours and straight pours and things like that, it just gives you a lot more options. It allows you to move your um, composition quite a bit more. So if I do my ring pour right in the center here on this dry canvas, the center of that ring is going to stick there and it, it's going to be very hard to shift. If I have a base coat down and I pour that ring on it, it gives it something to move on. So if I'm stretching it out and I'm really liking what's going on over here, but not so much over here, it gives a lot more play to moving that around. Now, some artists use a puddle and then they pour their rings or straight pours or whatever, and then they put um, a flow extender around it perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. The reason I prefer to put a base coat down first is I like negative space. So I like to give myself the option of leaving negative space if that's what seems to be what's going on or if I intentionally decide to, to leave negative space. Sometimes I, I think I'm going to cover the entire canvas, but I'm, I'm really liking something that I'm seeing. So I'll, I'll leave that negative space. And if I put a base coat down first, I think I tend to think that that negative space looks a little cleaner in the end. Sometimes when you're using a spatula to spread things out, you'll get little bumps. And when those dry, you'll see those little bumps. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a personal preference. So I always, always use a base coat. And I'm just gonna pour this right in the middle. And don't think that I'm wasting a bunch of paint when I do this. This is a jar of paint that I've been saving from this color combination of pores. And you can see it's a beautiful color. So all I'm going to end up doing is straining this to make sure there's no goobers in it. And I will reuse it again, okay? If you tap your canvas a couple of times that'll help bring air bubbles out. Okay, so I have my base coat all spread out. This is a nice thin base coat. I don't have it globbed on. I let it, uh, you can see over here, I let it pour off for a little bit so that I've got a nice thin coat here. I almost forgot, I wanted to show you the back of the canvas. So I had this handy dandy little tool and I get that under the push pin and just lift up. It makes it real easy to get these out. And then it's time to take the tape off. If you take this off in the first few days after it's dry, it's real easy to get off usually. 
go. And I think you can see what a nice clean line that leaves. I love the way the back of this canvas looks. Uh, I'll be really happy to sell this. And there is the dry painting. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out.